matter. Look at my little killer I got right here. I'm about to get scratched. Nope. <laughs> Bailey, get back up here. No, get back up here. Lay down. This is my other dog, y'all. My crazy dog. My young one right here. What's up, everybody? Hope everybody's doing good tonight. Got a little top five baits going on. Let's see. Let's get out of that. Somebody dropped a couple comments for me. Hey, get there and stay. You gotta stay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm never lonely. I've either got two little boys or three little pets around me. That little kitten was the, uh, that's my snake catcher. My, my mouse catcher and my snake catcher. I live a little bit out in the country. We got a few mice and snakes, so we bought a kitten. We're going to raise him up and then kick him out the door and make him go catch some critters for a living. So that's what we got going on. What's going on with all of y'all? Hope everything is good. We're going to get you some top five baits tonight. We're going to uh, answer some questions, whatever I can do to help you guys maybe catch a couple more fish this week. Fishing's been kind of, you know, pretty, pretty good um, overall. Honestly, the videos that have been coming out have been on some of the worser days here lately so uh we're definitely catching them you know pretty much every day pretty good right now so pretty consistent not too bad uh especially considering what time of year we're getting on towards the middle of july now that's typically when you know for me that's it's probably honestly you know one of my least favorite maybe my least favorite time of year to fish is that end of July and that month of August, you know, sometimes can be really tough, but this year, man, we're, we're catching fish pretty consistent, so. I know there's got to be more than one comment. I don't know why I'm not seeing. I don't know if my, my internet connection is not keeping up or what's going on. So there's a little kitten right down here where you guys can't see. See? He's just torturing this dog over here. <laughs> Get up here. Yeah. They're playing games with each other, so this should be a fun uh, fun live stream. Hey, bear with me, guys. I'm going to disconnect and reconnect because for some reason I'm not getting the comments. So I'm going to try. Hey, there's another one. Okay, I am getting comments. There just wasn't that many of them yet. All right, good. What up, Jay? Laugh? All right, now all, all my peeps are starting to show up. The comments are starting to come in. Hey, somebody let me know. Are those bugs really annoying y'all that y'all can hear in the background? If that's too loud, let me know and I'll close that garage door. All right. Let's get started on top five baits. All right. This is the buzz bait. And it doesn't have to be this buzz bait. This is a new one that I've been using. It makes contact with that head. And yes, I know that head knockers have been around in the past. But... These days, there's a lot of people that I don't think, uh, I think there's a lot of people that haven't seen one because you can't just go buy these everywhere. They're not just, you don't just see these old head knocking where the blade actually contacts the head. You don't see those just everywhere you go looking for bait. So they're kind of unique. The other thing about this one is if you look how flat that head is, man, that thing, when you make a long cast out there, and you engage your reel, that thing will get up on top and start kicking up water immediately. It gets up and stays up at a slower speed than just about any other buzz bait. That's a huge asset to have as well. So I don't even know what this thing is called yet. It came in kind of a generic prototype package, but I do know that Ronnie Parker is selling them at the Lake Fork Tackle store. Uh, or you can also call Lake Fork Tackle and he'll ship them to you. So he just got a new shipment in yesterday so yesterday new shipment be sure and check that out because that thing is catching some good fish it's really kind of that buzz bait bite is taking off here and it's not you're not catching a lot of fish but we are catching some big fish early in the morning and under cloud cover conditions with the old buzz bait yeah we see you back here man hi buddy you're gonna get eaten by a dog if you jump over here though <laughs> I hope he showed up on camera. He was thinking about coming over here. Yes, I named my cat Mattis. Mad Dog Mattis is the name of my cat. That's how we roll around here. All right. Little 5-inch swim baits. Still a great day-in, day-out option. Using a few different kind. 
using the Kitek, using the Smash Tills, uh, using that little 5 inch gizzard that Heath Taylor made. Whenever I get my hands on those hollow bodies, I use those that you guys saw us in the video that just got posted last night. Uh, if you haven't, be sure and check that video out either on YouTube or Facebook. Uh, posted a video with me and Heath Taylor, the owner of Smash Tech, really catching. Uh, Heath caught a lot of fish. Get up here. You gotta stop. <laughs> not, not the best dog to bring on a live stream right here. She's a little crazy. She's a sweet dog, but she's crazy. So, anyways, just five inch swim baits overall, no particular brand. We're using all different kinds. I'm using the Smash Techs, the Kai Techs, all different kinds of brands. Also, we have started catching a lot of fish, especially when we get these thunderstorms and it dirties up that water a little bit. We're catching a lot of fish on the chatterbaits again. Again, we're fishing it over grass, so like a 3 8 ounce. Uh, the green pumpkin seems to be producing the best. Catching a few fish on the white ones as well. But uh, green pumpkin seems to be the most consistent color right now on the chatterbaits. Then, of course, you got old yellow. Anytime you're around grass, old yellow still producing quite a few fish for us. Mr. Yellow Belly right there. I love this frog. And the fifth bait, I don't have one handy, but we are catching a lot of fish on slow days on a wacky rigged 5 inch Smash Tech Smash Stick. Best color for me has been uh, watermelon candy. But I mean, I think anything green with a little bit of flake in it would probably be good. So. Check out the uh, check out the smash sticks wacky rig on your tougher days. <laughs> Mad Dog Mattis, yeah, that's my cat's name. That's how we roll. I was only in the Marine Corps for four years, but it stays with you for life once you're in. So yes, I have a cat named Mad Dog Mattis. He is a straight knife hand killer. <laughs> he literally attacks your feet every time you walk down the sidewalk going into the house. It's awesome. All right, let's go back and look at some questions. If you had to pick a rod, what rod would you choose for frog fishing and light swim bait? One rod to do both, you're on a budget. Well, 7.4 Heavy. I'll go with the 7.4 Heavy. The good thing about the Limit 5 Series rod that I'm throwing on the 7.4 Heavy the reason I like it so much for frog fishing, it has that tip that allows me to work that frog. But that tip would also allow you to throw the lighter swim baits as well. I would put it on that. I would put 50 pound braid on there and I would never look back because that swim bait's a moving bait. So I'm not too worried about line visibility. And when you had to fish that swim bait in heavy cover, you would have the right line that you would need to. And you definitely want to have that 50 pound braid on there when you're throwing a frog for sure. So. 7.4 Heavy, to me, that is the best frog rod that I've ever put my hands on. I absolutely love it. Limit 5 Series, you can check them out at LimitFishing.com. You can check them out at LFTLures.com. Uh, if you're local to Lake Fork, you can just go by the store in Emory. Put your hands on all those rods up there. They've got them. Favorite reel company? Man, I've got a few different reels I like. I'm a big fan of Dial. Well, probably Dial is probably my favorite reel company. Dial is probably my favorite one. I don't know, man. There's a lot. Shimano makes really good reels. I like those Academy brand reels. Those H2O Metals are really good reels for the price. Lose makes some good reels. I mean, those are kind of the few that I would stick to. Um, yeah. Of course, Abu Garcia has been around forever. That was my first bait casting reel. It was a Quantum and an Abu Garcia. Uh, not the biggest fan of Quantum anymore, but you know, Abu Garcia still makes some good products. What knot am I using on a three quarter ounce football jig? I tie a knot called the Homer's Circle Knot. I don't have stuff here prepared to, to show you how to tie that knot. Maybe I should someday. I use a knot called a Homer Circle Knot, and uh, it uh. It's a super strong knot. It's a little bit more complicated, harder to tie. But other than what I'm with braid, with braid I use a polymer knot. But other than that, I use that Homer Circle knot, the strongest knot I've ever used. Somebody says, let's see who this is. Buzzy Green. I just got the last pack of Smash Tech Hollow Body Swim Baits today. What is the best hook to use with those baits? Uh, we're using the 5-watt belly weighted uh, owner hook. 
I think it's, uh, I want to say it's a quarter ounce. I want to say it's a quarter ounce weight on that 5 out hook that they make. But just the 5 out belly weighted hook from Oda is the one that fits it real good. You can use up to a 6 out on it. It's a pretty long bait. Um, it's a good bait. You'll see it has a very unique action, man. That whole body really shakes real hard when it's swimming. I mean, it gets after it. That's awesome. So we sold out of we sold out of the hollow bodies in 24 hours from video release. That's very, very good. Thank you guys for every one of you that, that may have went and ordered some of those. I really appreciate that. Uh, let's see. Jeffrey Hill. I've recently started using braid. And when I feel like I need a leader, I've been trying to use an FG knot and I'm having massive trouble learning how. Could you do a stupid, simple how-to video sometime? I would be happy, but I don't use that knot. I use a uni to uni knot on, on my uh, leaders. If I'm using a leader on braid, I use a double uni, uni to uni knot. Uh, six times on both, six wraps on both on my unis. Uh, I'd be happy to do that. You know what? That's going to be a good how-to. We're going to do a knot tying video in the very near future. That is a great idea for a video. I like that idea. We'll definitely do that. Something simple we can do. Yep, double uni knot. That's the one I use. The guy below him just commented, use the uni. Some people like a blood knot, whatever, whatever. Man, uni to uni, I've never had the knot slip out. I've broke, I've broken leaders before, but I've never had the knot slip on a double uni. How much do I charge for a guide trip on fork? So my rates for a guide trip on fork are four hundred fifty dollars a day for a full day, three hundred for a half day. That's for one or two people, up to two people, same price. Uh, if you add a third person, add 125 to either rate. Have I ever fished or thought about fishing Lake Havasu in Arizona? No, nah, I sure haven't. I've never fished anywhere out west. I can go ahead and tell you guys that. Uh, something that I want to do someday. I, I've never really thought about the Havasu deal. Uh, you know, I really, when, I, when I'm thinking west, I'm thinking more of the California deal. But uh, I know Lake Havasu is a, a darn good fishery in its own right, and I know it's got some good scenery too, so I'm not opposed. You know, don't tell my wife I said that, but I'm not opposed to a trip to Lake Havasu. Uh, it's just a matter of sooner or later we're going to get to a point where we are going to travel some. It's just hard right now because we're guiding so much, and we're trying to, uh, you know, make sure really in my first full year, full-time guiding, I've been doing it, you know, kind of doing it both with another job for a couple years now. But this is my first year just only doing fishing for a living. So this first full year is going to be kind of tough for me to travel around too much because I'm really trying to run, let this whole year cycle through and then see where I'm at, you know, see what kind of financial situation I'm at. And when you got a wife and kids, man, you got to make sure you take care of them first. So uh, just taking my time, feeling my way through it. I appreciate all you guys watching. We will do some traveling, and I would love to link up with some of you guys across the country when we go to doing that. I will be reaching out to y'all. If I had to use one rod for everything, what would I use? That's a good question. Um, I think the most versatile rod is like a seven foot medium heavy type rod. Some type, hey, don't, don't do it. Do not chase that cat. <laughs> it's a good girl. Uh, I think something in the seven foot medium heavy range is your most versatile rod. Like, probably for me, the one that's in my lineup that I would use would be the seven two medium heavy. I could get away with throwing a weightless plastic on it, and I could get away with flipping a jig on it. Uh, you know, there are some things that are definitely going to be better. You'd be hard-pressed to throw an Alabama rig on it. You could do it, but it would take a real soft touch and careful about how you cast it or you break the rod. But a 7-2, seven 7 foot medium heavy type rod would do just about anything you wanted uh, to do and do it well. Fish Okeechobee. Okeechobee is 100% on my bucket list. It's right up my wheelhouse. The way that I look, the way I like to fish, uh, Okeechobee is just perfect for me, so I would love to fish it someday. All right, somebody says, this is a great question. Why do you like Skeeter so much? So for anybody that doesn't know, I have these Skeeter, Team Skeeter hats, but... I'm not on the Skeeter Pro Staff. Um, not yet. Hope to be someday. Hopefully soon, maybe. Who knows? But uh, I bought a Skeeter with my own money. I didn't get a Pro Staff deal of any kind. 
if I had all the money in the world, I'm still on that boat right there. I'd have the same boat. Um, I'm a big believer that Skeeter is the best bass boat, overall bass boat on the market. I think it has, when you're talking about, <clears throat> excuse me, when you're talking about 20 to 21 foot class bass boats, I think the Skeeter has the fastest hole shot out of anything. And in most tournaments, in most tournaments, that hole shot is going to save you more time than any kind of top end speed or anything like that. There's other boats that are faster at the top end than a Skeeter, but there's no other boat that's faster in rough water. There's no other boat that's more comfortable and feels more safe to drive in rough water. And there's no other boat that fishes any better than it does when you're, you know, off plane fishing, you know, as far as a fishing platform goes. There's not a boat that's any better. Um, on top of that, it's a quality build. Uh, you know, the components, the interior stuff, the carpet, the latches, the hinges, the screws, the upholstery, the seats, everything... Everything on that boat is built is such high quality. I promise you guys, I beat the snot out of this boat. I use it as hard as a boat could possibly be used. I fish out of it every single day, six days a week. Um, you know, I'm going to fish at the end of this year. I, you know, if I would have been doing this for the full year only fishing, I would have fished close to 300 days at the end of the year, 250 to 300 days. When you fish that often, your boat better be built right or it's going to fall apart on you. I know a Skeeter. I had a Skeeter before this one. This is my second Skeeter in a row. They hold up. I had that other one for 20 months, beat the brakes off of it, and it looked, once I washed it and cleaned it up and got it ready to take back in, it looked like brand new. When they sold that boat to the next guy from that dealer that I traded it in at, man, it looked like brand new boat. It looked just like it did the day I bought it. Uh, they're just very durable, very high quality, and they perform in every category exactly the way I want them to. So. Can't say enough about Skeeter boats. I think they are the best on the market. That's just my personal opinion. I know there's a little bit of a Ford Chevy deal that goes on there, but for me, they're the ones I prefer. All right, let's go back. We had a bunch of comments come in while I was trying to answer that one. All right, your name suggests Lake Fork, but if you got to choose a lake in East Texas, which one would you choose for? Um, yeah, I like fork. I like big fish. Don't get me wrong, I like to catch numbers, but I'd rather catch, for me personally, I'd rather catch five fish that weigh 25 pounds than catch 35 fish that weigh 15 pounds. That's just my personal opinion how I like to fish. Uh, Lake Fork is, has been, and is, and will be for a long time the very best chance you have to catch, you know, seven pound plus fish. There's just more of those per acre in Lake Fork than there is anywhere else, and that's why it's my favorite lake. Um, now, there, I, I do like to go fish other lakes. I fish other lakes a lot. I like to change it up a little bit. I feel like it helps me remain a more versatile angler. Uh, I, help, I, I think it makes me a better guy because I put myself in different situations, and then, you know, on tough days when I'm having a hard time figuring them out on Fork... I can, uh, it allows me to be more versatile, more creative in how I go about putting people on fish. Have a trip booked first week in August. Man, right now we're grass fishing. So somebody's asking about what should you bring for the first week in August. Uh, right now on my boat, we're grass fishing. We're, we're doing all grass fishing all the time. I haven't fished uh, too much deep structure fishing. I'll, I have an offshore structure fishing trip coming up uh, day after tomorrow. Guy specifically asked to fish out deep. He wants to learn how to do that, and we're going to do that. But for the most part, every day, day in, day out, if I'm trying to catch the most fish I can and the best fish for my customers, I'm grass fishing. The reason why is that offshore stuff is getting pounded with pressure from every guide and every weekend angler on the lake is just hammering the, that deep water stuff. Um, so we're, we're concentrating on some grass. So. You know, these baits that I'm talking about right now, these top five baits are going to be pretty boring for a while because the buzz bait, the frog, the swim bait, the weedless swim bait, the chatter bait, the weightless plastics, these things are going to be in the top five baits week in, week out for a pretty long while until the weather starts changing now that we've settled all the way into summer. So, I mean, the type of things that you see me talking about tonight, that's what we're going to be doing first week of August too. Bear with me.
Bear with me. Fort Couch says, good vids, bro. I'm about to get out of the army and have more time to fish. Can you... I don't know. Oh, can you send me... Some affordable bait caster with good quality suggestions. Okay, so for affordable bait casters, that Academy brand, H2O Express Metal, I think they retail that for $79.99, $80. Man, the mosquitoes are tearing me up tonight, boy. I'm telling you what. Uh, like $80 bucks for that uh, H2O Metal, and that is a great rod for the money. Um, lose, the lower end lose are very good quality reels for the money. Uh, the speed pulls on the lower price tiers. Um... Daiwa makes one called an Excelier. If you want to spend just a little bit more, but you don't want to spend a whole bunch, I want to say that Daiwa Excelier is like a hundred and fifty dollar reel, something like that. And it's a like it's borderline a top end, top tier type reel. It's a very very good reel for not too terribly much money. I mean, it's a little more expensive than a lot than some of the other reels out there. It's not at the bottom end price wise. It's kind of at the middle tier, but it's a very quality reel. Somebody says, thanks for serving. Hey, I appreciate you thanking me for serving. Uh, I certainly didn't do it to get thanks, but it means a lot when people appreciate it. So, uh, me, me and Rob, Lunkers TV, fished together the other day, and you, you guys will see that video tomorrow. And we drove out to a lake, and we had a lot of military-type conversations on the way home and started thinking about some of the stuff that <laughs> that you used to do and, and that you've seen and that you've, you've been around and, and other guys that you know that have done even more than you have and you know, I, I didn't have it bad at all in my military experience. I mean, I got deployed to Iraq and all that, but uh, I didn't have it nearly as bad as a lot of guys that were over there in the time that I was there. And man, I appreciate you thanking me, but man, thank 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 all the guys that, that had to do a lot more than I did because I didn't have it too bad. I mean, I got in and out of there without a scratch, basically, and uh, never really had to be in too much harm's way. And there's a lot of guys that have it a lot worse, man, and and jogging memory lane a little bit here on live uh, live live stream that's that's a little dangerous but I appreciate you thanking us but make sure you thank other guys you know because I, I had it good it was easy for me so I appreciate it though somebody says I fish a highly pressured lake with reeds only how would you fish it well if it doesn't have any um, offshore type structure then I would use those reeds uh, I would try to utilize those reeds a lot the same way that we're, we're fishing the grass we're fishing with the same type of baits you know buzz bait down the edge frog down the edge on tough days go to those weightless plastics and those swim baits uh, same type of stuff I would use really it, now on a lake that only has reeds it doesn't have any underwater aquatic vegetation if you have some offshore structure I would rather you I would rather go fish that um, I would rather be out there Looking for a... Uh... Oh, yeah, my dog is retarded, y'all. This dog, she's crazy. She's a good girl, but she's crazy. Yeah, I would go out and look for the offshore structure. If it doesn't have that, then I would stick to the same type of stuff we're talking about here. Okay, so Nick Cavazos asked an interesting question. This would be good for some of you guys to know. If you're thinking about booking a guy trip or calling me, it's a good question. He says, what time of year is a good time of year to catch a lot of fish with a chance of giants mixed into the, the, the mix there? So fall. Honestly, the answer is fall. In the fall, all different sizes and literally all different species tend to get mixed up together, both shallow and deep. Uh, it depends on the year, it depends on the grass, it depends on the weather patterns, whether we're fishing shallow or deep. Year before last, I did every bit of my fall fishing less than 10 foot. Last year, pretty much all of my fall fishing was done out deep offshore. So, you know, it, it just depends on, on the weather patterns. But either way, the fish get mixed up together. And it's definitely one of those deals in the fall where you will catch 
you know, 20 fish that are like a pound, and then all of a sudden the eight pounder shows up, one that could eat all those fishes in there with them. Um, that definitely happens in the fall. So I would say from like October 10th to basically the end of November is the best time of year for that. Tell LFT, oh, what? Every time you guys make another comment, it kicks me down where I lose my spot. Oh, somebody's saying we need to tell LFT catch up on some of their baits. Hey, so here's the deal with LFT, guys. They have experienced a good year of growth. Uh, they have got a lot of orders from Tackle Warehouse, Bass Pro, places like that. And they are literally, like I was up there, they are literally running plastics all night. Like they've hired more guys to pour plastics. And they're, they're running baits during the day while they're open for business. And then they have a guy that comes in at night. Uh, their guy that's been there the longest pouring baits. He comes in at night and he runs baits all night until they open up the next morning. So they're basically running plastics 24-7 as fast as they can. They're trying to keep up. It's a problem, but it's a good problem. They're having, you know, they're just about to get caught up though. Last time I talked to them, so you should start to see more of their plastics being stock everywhere. Uh, I know up at the store, especially, there's been some stuff that's been out of stock, but they're working on it. They're getting caught up as fast as they can. They're working 24/7 right now. Any word on the merchandise timeline? Can't wait to represent. Okay, so the logo, my wife designed my logo. <coughs> Excuse me. The logo that you guys see on the uh, YouTube channel and on the Facebook page, my wife designed that logo. It was designed on that small frame, you know, just a, a small logo for the, for the website stuff, um, for the YouTube stuff and everything. So... When we expanded it and blew it up to get it printed onto shirts, we had to, we we're having to test it first. So we've got a couple of test uh, decals and a couple of test shirts being done right now. So as soon as they get here, if that logo is good to go, then we're going to make an order for apparel. So you know, right now there's no definite timeline. Uh, it could be as soon as a month, but it could be longer than that, depending on if there's issues with that logo. So. The sooner we find that out, the better I'll know. Once we get that that those test shirts and decals in, then we'll have some. So we're going to have decals, and we're going to have shirts right now, and then we will work on getting hoodies after that for you guys to buy as the weather cools off. Hey, I appreciate you guys wanting to represent all you that want to buy apparel. We're going to get it done. I cannot say thank you enough for that. That is, I mean, I love it. I love it because we're trying to build a brand and a community of just, you know, helping each other catch the next fish, and, th and that's what you guys are about, and I, I appreciate you guys wanting to support that brand and help me build that community. Wow, a lot of questions tonight. Thank you for all the questions tonight, guys. Uh, somebody says he has a tourney this weekend. Looking forward to dragging a Carolina rig around all day. Yeah, that's a real exciting type of fishing, uh, but that's what you got to do sometimes. Donnie Smith says they rocked it on Conowa Lake Tuesday night with big spoons. They would only they would only take the spoon on the fall. That's pretty typical for the flutter spoon deal. Uh, the video next week, you're actually going to see us catching fish on some flutter spoons, one of which is a new flutter spoon that's not released yet that Joe Spates, the original flutter spoon guy, is making. We're getting really close to the release on that new flutter spoon. And, uh, of course, as soon as that's ready to sell, you guys will know about it first right here. But I'm going to go ahead and tell you, man, that thing is deadly. Joe Spates makes his hooks. The, the, all those hooks on the spoons are dressed with Mylar dressing. And, and the one that I, the prototype that I've been working with, there's literally the Mylar has been torn off the hook. I caught so many fish on it. And there's teeth marks all up and down it. It's catching the fire out of them. You guys will see a video come Monday that will show you what I'm talking about. It's really catching them. Somebody loves me. Hey, man, I love you too, Matt Carville. I love you too, buddy.
Uh oh, somebody says thanks for putting me on that nine pound eleven ounce frogfish. He beat his personal best by almost three pounds. That's old Alan Brown. Alan Brown caught it within five ounces, folks, of a of a double digit in in July. Okay, in July he caught it on a frog, and it was an intense fight to say the least. Uh, it was a, it was a fun day. It was a fun day, absolutely. It was a pretty incredible fish. That's a that's a giant fish in the summertime, ain't no doubt. On the Joe Spates Flutter Spoon, do they take orders over the phone and mail out of state? Yes. The answer to that is yes. Um, Joe Spates will ship an order. Um, if you go back and look at some of the videos I've, I've done with spoons in them, his number is down below in the description. You can call him and he will ship you an order. think somebody says they spent over a thousand dollars at Lake Fork Tackle in one year hey we appreciate you so much I know Mr. Ronnie appreciates you and that's what you know guys with all my sponsors I've said it before I'll continue to say it with every one of my sponsors they're people that I know personally and that I know are just awesome great just as good of people as you'll ever meet and that's why I like working with them so much and it's no different with Mr. Ronnie Parker Kevin Sharp Sean Brandon, all the guys they have working up there, they're just salt of the earth, good people, and I think the world of them, they're like a family to me. Uh, Ronnie's treated me like a, you know, adopted son since the day I met him. He's an incredible man and, and been very, very good to me. So, uh, yeah, please do support LFT every chance you get. We really appreciate it when you do. But, you know, when you buy from Lake Fork Tackle, when you buy from Smash Tech, when you buy from Six Sense Lures, uh, you can rest assured when you buy from a bait that I'm fishing, sponsored bait that I'm fishing, you can rest assured that you're buying from really, really good people that are going to stand behind their product and they're going to work hard to make sure they're providing you with a quality product every time. Um, so just a little something to put you a peace of mind when you buy their product. You're going to be supporting good people and you're going to be getting good product. Does Lake Fork Tackle have an online website I can browse and order from? Absolutely. Uh, LFTLures.com. LFTLures.com is Lake Fork Tackle's website, and you can place orders directly on the website. Will throwing a swim jig around and in flooded trees work? Uh, yeah, it will. A swim jig can work anywhere. There's really not a bad or wrong place necessarily to throw a swim jig. I prefer throwing a swim jig around grass. When I get into timber, I like to go to square bill crankbaits because a square bill crankbait will bounce off that timber and create a lot of reaction strikes as it's coming through and it hits that, that timber and it bounces. That creates a lot of reaction bites that you wouldn't get with a swim jig. I prefer crankbaits when I'm fishing flooded timber over swim jigs, but swim jig can catch them just about anywhere you want to throw them. Yeah, Matt Carville says he saw Lunker's video. Yeah, the yeah. So you guys go check out Lunkers TV. He already posted the video uh, yesterday from mine and his day the day before. Uh, we were actually not on Fork. In the beginning of the video, we stated we weren't on Fork, but um, we were on a different lake in East Texas. Uh, Matt Carville asked how's Fork doing. Fork's doing great. We're catching them on Fork. But we were catching fish on spoons, and, you know, anywhere from, I think Lunkers, when he looked at the graph, we were in 20-plus foot of water. But we were catching them from 16 to 20 foot of water is basically where the the go zone was the boat was sitting in like 20 you know over 20 foot 20 foot 22 23 25 but either way yeah we were we were throwing spoons out there and catching them literally almost every cast for a while so be sure and check out lunker's channel and then i'll, I'll have it on mine as well the my video will be out monday hey you gotta chill out don't be going chasing that cat now that's a good girl Any suggestions on Toledo being in and around the Pendleton Bridge for the next few days? 
Pendleton Bridge, in and around the Pendleton Bridge. I wouldn't be fishing the Pendleton Bridge. <laughs> if it was me, if I was on Toledo Bend this time of year, I'd be at the mouth of Six Mile, and the mouth of Housing, and the mouth of Indian Mounds, which is just south of Pendleton Bridge, not too far as far as Toledo Bend goes, but pretty far for most lakes. But I would be down there in front of those three creeks, those three areas, and fishing those offshore uh, ledges, points, humps, that's where I'd be fishing if I was fishing to lead a bit. Just because simply I'm not down there right now and I don't know the grass situation. Uh, there could be a lot of grass fishing up shallow for summertime stuff. I don't know. But if it was me and I was going on there first day, the first thing I'd check is those. If I could get on that offshore bite out there, that'd be the easiest thing to find and break down if it was me. So that's what I would be looking at if I was at Toledo Bend. All right. Well... Wow, we've been going for 36 minutes already. Okay, Bailey, are you ready to wrap this up? Come here, sit up, sit up. Whoa, 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 you're going to get a hook in you. You're going to get hooks in you. My crazy dog. This dog is crazy. Are you ready to end this? Tell everybody bye, baby. Look, say bye. See y'all later. See y'all later. Hey, we appreciate you guys watching as always. How is late fall fishing on Fork? Hey, late fall fishing is maybe my favorite time of year to fish Fork. One last question to answer. Literally the end of November, I've had some of my very best trips on Fork. It may be my favorite time of year to fish Fork. But that being said, it's time for me to go feed this beast right here. Keep it from killing my cat. I appreciate you guys watching so much. I appreciate y'all buying out the Smash Tech baits on the swim baits this week. I appreciate everything. And we'll work on the apparel as soon as we get the logos back and we know what's going on with those. We'll get you release dates on apparel. And other than that, we'll see you guys next time right here on your Lake Fort Guide.